Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna go through the process of making a squirrel commission and it's my first commission since the Calgary Zoo dolls. So I'll go through the process of how I made these commissions and I've got two commissions from the same person. So the next one will be up next week. So stay tuned. Okay, so I'm starting off with the resin cast of an original sculpture that I have sculpted, molded and cast in resin myself. And this particular person wanted some glass eyes and she gave me a um, reference photo of a squirrel that used to hang around her house. And it was a kind of really unique squirrel with like a white face and blue eyes. So I um, cast these glass eyes inside the resin piece and um, this is what you have. So I'm going around and painting the outside of the eyes, the nose and the mouth with a um, pink coloured um, acrylic paint and this is just a water-based paint and I do actually put a um, primer paint on the resin before I actually paint anything onto it just so that the paint adheres to the resin because resin is kind of like plastic it's kind of slippery so um, paint can easily be scratched off so definitely put a primer down if you want to paint your uh, resin pieces and if you're interested in a video on primers uh, let me know in the comments and I might be able to do a video on priming resin pieces for um, painting and then the same deal with the feet and the hands. So again, a resin cast that I have sculpted myself and I'm just painting up the little pink bits on um, the, uh, the hands and with that same acrylic paint. So once that's dry, I can go ahead and attach it to the armature piece. Moving on to the fur that I'll be using. So I'm using this uh, longish pile faux fur. And it's exactly the same as squirrel fur, so it works quite well if you have a squirrel doll that you want to make. Um, and I got this locally from a store here in Australia called Spotlight. Um, and if you're in Australia, uh, go to Spotlight when they have sales on because their fur is quite cheap. Um, and as you can see here, I've drawn on the patterns of the uh, doll body. So I'm just going around and cutting along those lines with a small sharp um, pair of scissors. and. Definitely prefer to use small pairs of scissors than anything else. So if you use large pair of scissors, then they tend to sort of lose control and just cut too much. So with smaller pairs, you can get in between the faux fur. So once that's done, I'll go ahead and sew all of the bits up on the sewing machine. And I leave the back end open and I also leave the, um, the fit legs open as well. So I can turn it the right way around with that big hole at the back, as you can see. And that way I can feed the little legs through as well and it won't be a, a horrible struggle trying to get them through. So there will be some hand sewing um, once everything's ready to be sewn up. So once it's flipped the right way around, this is what we have. So it just looks like a furry mess at the moment, but once we have inserted the armature and attached all the pieces and then filled the body with polyfill, it will start to um, take shape of a squirrel and you can actually start to sculpt the fur um, and trim it and stuff. So once the armature's in, uh, this one has a wire armature uh, and I know I do armatures with um, plastic ball and socket. I'll go ahead and um, sew up the, all the loose ends with a ladder stitch. So I am planning to make a ladder stitch video um, specifically for faux furs, but uh, you can just check it out on Google as well um, and on YouTube if you can find something until that's up. So once that's all sewn together, I'll go ahead and glue the faux fur piece to the resin uh, using some tacky fabric glue. And this is just fabric glue that I've got from Spotlight again, which I'm sure you can find some tacky glue in your uh, local craft stores. And I usually leave this to dry for about um, 24 hours to make sure everything's adhered to the resin uh, as it should be. And if it hasn't, I'll just go ahead and put some more glue in and just wait another 24 hours so everything is glued together. So once I've done that, I'll go ahead and fur the face. So this is the pattern that that squirrel has. Uh, so it's a very unique type of squirrel. So I'm really glad I got to do something different. Um, and then uh, once that's all attached, I can go ahead and add any little accents like whiskers and little, um, you know, shaded bits, different colored bits with some, um, just some fabric paint. And then I'll be done and I'll go ahead and fur the, the feet and the hands as well. And then it's ready to be sent off home. 
So this one is a commission, so it won't be for sale in my shop, but I have some more dolls uh, up for sale in my shop that are looking for homes at creaturesofnat.com. So that's my new shop, so I don't sell things in Etsy anymore and their fees are just too too high and it's too ridiculous now. So much more economical to have my own shop. So head over there if you want anything else. And there's also a whole lot of different watercolours and little sculptures and stuff and I'll be adding some more supplies as well. So here's what we have as the final pictures. Let me know what you think. And as for commissions, I'll be taking one slot very, very soon. So keep an eye out on my Facebook and Instagram pages if you're interested in that. And that is it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any requests, you can leave it in the comments down below. You can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.